Uh, so next up, we have a great way to finish the conference, uh, talk on testing crashing servers uh, by Jonathan Abrahams. So I will hand it off to him. Okay, thank you. The slides up. Is that on here? No, it looks like it got hit here. Okay. It's probably when I move that up. There you go. That looks like yours. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Jonathan Abrahams. I work at MongoDB. Um, I'm in the test infrastructure group. Um, hopefully some of you are familiar with what MongoDB, MongoDB does. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about how we uh, test our server uh, under crash scenarios. So as you are probably aware, uh, machines can crash for a variety of reasons. Um, maybe it's in a virtual machine, or it might actually be a physical machine. Um, and we need to see what's gonna happen to our MongoDB server. I mean, it's pretty important. We're holding data that's stored out to disk, and we really don't know. When we came into this project, we weren't really sure, can we be robust enough to survive that? So there could be operating system failures, hardware failures, uh, and then there's also application crashes of the MongoDB itself uh, where maybe it got some sort of unexpected termination, maybe from fuzzing. Well, we could actually try just aborting the MongoDB, uh, which is the process of the server, but it really doesn't fully simulate uh, what happens if you have an unexpected crash of the machine or like the oper operating system kernel. We really want to be able to test some sort of immediate power loss because of caching that might be done at the, uh, at the lowest level of the I.O. Um, and also kernel panics um, can leave the application uh, and the data in unrecoverable states. So this is your typical startup uh, of your um, machine after it's been terminated or even booted. Uh, it will go into some sort of hardware and software checks in the operating system. Uh, and then eventually it'll turn it over to your application. In, in our case, the, the MongoD has its own recovery mode. Uh, it can detect the fact that it had been terminated. Um, and if it passes that, then it allows it to be connected to by clients. So, you know, how are you gonna go about, when we, get, when we jumped into this project, what are you gonna do about testing something like, a, you know, power failure? Well, the easiest thing is just basically uh, run MongoD on some machine in a lab or at your desk and pull the plug and start it up again, see what happens. Uh, of course, that's manual and labor intensive and, you know, you can't do this across uh, you know, different uh, testing cycles. Um, so then the next, the next thought was, well, we could do a real low-tech, cheap solution. Let's just put an appliance timer there. You don't have to be there to actually pull the plug, but the appliance timer will do it. But the appliance timer is, it's not fine-grained. It's 15 minutes. You gotta wait before it can actually turn it back on. Uh, so you can't do these repeatedly over and over again and get, you know, maybe quick results. Uh, another alternative approach, which we'll discuss a little bit later how this was done, was to use an internal command to actually crash your machine, which is almost functionally equivalent to a power cycle. Uh, and then I was able to set this up in a cron job so we can uh, run this internal command so everything's kind of like running on that machine. Um, so that was another approach. So we realized we really need to do this a lot more often. Um, and, you know, so we have to go figure out how are we going to be able to do this over and over again? Um, because the recovery, the moment in which you crash it, it's very subtle. We really don't know what point, uh, what might be running uh, that might cause something to be unrecoverable. So we want to run it like maybe, I don't know, 100 times or something before we feel good about this. 
So we came across um, this solution, which I don't know if you can actually see it here. This is what we use for the power part. Uh, it's called the Ubiquiti M Power Pro. Let me see if I can turn on the light. And um, it's a programmable um, power device where you have SSH access to it. And um, all you do is you can go in there and you can basically turn off one of the outlets on here or any of the outlets uh, with a very simple command. This is how it's done. Hopefully you can see that on the slides. All you do is you send a zero to shut it off to some slash dev slash, uh, let's say output eight, which this is plugged into, and to turn it back on, you send the one in there. And that's all that script is doing right now. So that was one part of the solution. We figured out how we can crash physical machines and repeatedly turn them off and on. What about virtual machines? Well, virtual machines uh, operate differently. They use shared hardware, uh, or rather, they use shared resources because they rely on the uh, underlying uh, host operating system. And it's also important to test virtual machines for uh, maybe terminations of the virtual machine because that's what a lot of our customers use out in the cloud uh, or even in their own data centers. They're actually running with virtual machines. So it's important to know from a completeness, per, completeness perspective, whether or not virtual machines are going to uh, have any problems as well as physical machines. Uh, crashing virtual machines actually turned out to be fairly simple. Um, you know, like using KVM uh, type of machines using the Linux containers, it's just using uh, this virtual destroy command, which is, uh, you know, there's nothing sent to the underlying um, applications running in the machine. It's, it's like basically destroying it and, but it doesn't destroy the machine from the perspective that you can't bring it back up. It just basically, it's, a, it's like a shut off. Uh, and VMware also has this VM run stop hard uh, command. And turning them back on is, it's, a, it's the same corollary as just running start commands. And believe it or not, they actually do come back on. Um, I did script this and uh, we used both of these. And you could probably do this for other virtualization, uh, um, um, you know, other virtualization uh, machines as well. So here's the other uh, part that um, I did uncover about internal crashing, which works for Linux only. Uh, there's this thing called a, uh, a sysrq key, which is like as if you're at the console and you want to basically put it into some uh, boot mode. Um, it's, you can do this through software by writing a one out to uh, proc sys kernel sysrq, sets it up, and then you, set the, you send the B for boot to uh, proc sysrq trigger. It's an immediate boot of your, of your machine. So here is another part of where you can basically internally take any Linux machine, um, I, I think you know most modern ones at least, and it will just boot it right up. So it's, it's like a, another type of crash. Uh, one other part that uh, we stumbled upon was that when the machines do come back on and they're plugged into something, um, you have to make sure your BIOS uh, is set so that when it sees the power, it will actually bring it back up. So that's another one of those caveats. Windows machines have some sort of additional prompting that will happen uh, sometimes. So that was another thing I was able to script in. So I was able to actually uh, do power cycles on Windows machines, but through the physical means. Um, and there's a utility called BCD Edit, uh, and you can set the boot status policy to ignore those failures. So it doesn't give you these prompts like, do you really you know, want to go into recovery mode? Do you want to boot normally? So essentially, you can just basically plug a machine into here, run, run some sort of script that crashes it, and whether it's plugged into a, a Linux machine or a Windows machine, they'll come back up. Now, if you want to run whatever application, in our case, MongoD, you can go ahead and run your applications um, as you would normally, and then you know, do whatever tests you want to do. So we have the machine, we, we figured out all these key parts to it. Uh, we stitched them together into a, a bash script. Um, and like I said before, the MongoD goes into this recovery mode. This is performed automatically. Uh, in the case of our storage engine, Wired Tiger, which is what I have on my shirt, which is our default storage engine now, um, it's going to go and look for some stable, the last stable copy of the data it has on disk from the last checkpoint it wrote out, and then it'll apply um, a journal log to bring it back up. 
it's a little bit more we want to do in, in the scripting. Um, before we actually crash machine, we actually want to apply some sort of um, moderate load or um, maybe even more than moderate of all sorts of different type of um, database um, commands and to basically put the database server into um, any mode we can think of so that at the time the crash happens, we'll be able to um, you know, possibly stimulate a, uh, a data corruption or, or something like that. That's what would be our failure. Uh, and then in our case, you know, that was specific to the MongoD server. We added in some other options about well, how we wanted the clients to do that, whether it would be in a replica set, a single node replica set or standalone, what storage engine to test. Um, when we started the testing, Wired Tiger uh, was new to MongoDB. Uh, we actually had just acquired it um, and it was, being introduced as a second storage engine. We use MMAP v1 as our uh, storage engine prior to 3.0. And uh, there was a lot of focus on making sure that Wired Tiger would, you know, was really gonna be robust enough um, to switch it. Um, so after it started, like I said, we're gonna do some other things, check the status of the server. But the, the key point is that if we fail to recover, or we can't connect to the MongoD because maybe it uh, died or something like that, and some other validation that we can run against the MongoD once it comes back up, we know the test has failed. Okay, and this basically talks a little about the type of things that we do after we've restarted it. Uh, the validation is an additional step um, for those of you who do use MongoD um, that um, does not happen on recovery mode. Recovery mode is not as, uh, it doesn't look through all the documents to make sure that it's, um, uh, there's no problems, but validation actually goes through your collections thoroughly. It's a, it's a slow process, but it might be necessary to do if you do encounter uh, this type of situation. Uh, what was good about uh, this project is we developed a script to make it basically um, like a self-service application because we had developers in all over the world. And um, this script actually can not only can run on, it doesn't need any custom hardware, it can run on Windows machines, it can run on uh, Linux machines, it can run in the cloud, it can run on localized and remote hardware, things like that. And we'll save some data for, for uh, in case of uh, failure is detected, we'll, we'll back up data for our, uh, for our developers to use. So in conclusion, we found that the crash testing helped to extend our testing to scenarios we had not previously covered. Um, and uh, to be able to provide these local and remote teams with the tools to reproduce and analyze the failures. And we helped to improve the storage layer, hopefully for the MongoDB. Um, like I mentioned before, we did find some bugs there. Um, and here's a list of some of the bugs we found. Most of them were fixed, and I think there might be one that they're still working on. Uh, one open issue that I did find that um, I haven't been able to solve, maybe we have somebody out here in the Windows crowd, um, you can easily crash, like I said, internally uh, the, the on Linux machines, but from Windows, you get these blue screens of death all the time, but there's, I don't believe there's any systematic way to, uh, to crash a Windows machine. If anybody knows, you know, please send me an email or be in touch with me afterwards, and I'd love to hear about that. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. So tools to crash computers. I am picking up so many great things from this conference. <laughs> turn my light back on. Uh, so we do have a question uh, from the audience. How do you verify that all committed changes are present after the recovery? All committed changes are present after the recovery. Oh, okay. So that yeah, that's a good question. So that's part of the validation, right? So we one of the things that um, one of the one of the options that I mentioned before was I write a checkpoint document out before I do the crash, which is an optional thing, um, because also that can trigger certain things that could happen at the at the database layer. So if that doesn't show up, then you know we have uh, what we call an, uh, when we're in a replica set an op log. So if that shows up, then we we should have everything prior to that. So um, that's one of the ways we're able to determine that. But it, um, you know, if, if your application you know want to do something like this, you probably have to come up with some ways of figuring out how you're going to be able to uh, determine that it's successful also from recovery. All right, any questions in the room? Well then, thank you, Jonathan. Okay.